Hello everybody, this is CM Kozman again, back with another podcast, this time on the ongoing Jurassic Park 4 and the Feathers debacle. Now, as many of you may be aware, in our little uh, paleontological ghetto, a lot of feathers are being ruffled <laughs> over the decision by the producers to not include any feathers in Jurassic Park 4. Now, obviously, the problem many of us have is that the first Jurassic Park was made at a time when people assumed most dinosaurs looked like this. Let me dig it up. Back in the times of the old Jurassic Park, most people imagined dinosaurs to be uh, more or less scaly beasts, uh, something like... Okay, here is the dinosaur data book again. Nice 90s title on basically an encyclopedic coverage of all dinosaur species and here's what they thought dinosaurs looked like in the 90s. Now obviously we've come a bit far from this view. We no longer view the small meat-eating dinosaurs as scaly uh, bipedal reptiles. We now know most of them had feathers so on and so forth. So the deal is that a modern Jurassic Park movie should have uh, feathers in it and should have you know a more modern portrayal of dinosaurs but here I will argue that uh, the problems with Jurassic Park series or the problems with any movie with dinosaurs I have seen uh, run far deeper than just the skin or the integument now to begin with my problems with Jurassic Park now I know it's too easy for a fan to rant on YouTube but nevertheless here we go that the whole Jurassic Park thing has become uh, iconified. It has become like the chapters of an opera. Like in, in every movie after the first, there were the expected scenes. You had the sort of act where T-Rex comes in and eats somebody. You had another act in which the raptors attack and you had another act in which some sort of new dinosaur is expected to crop up and you had another act in which people go at all at the big uh, plant eaters or like the whole harmony and nature thing going on so basically right after the first movie the Jurassic Park series uh, degenerated into a series of expectation fulfilling movies in which you pretty went knowing what you would see now I believe in any movie with dinosaurs this is a more main problem uh, there are so many ways to there are so many ways to make a dinosaur movie that will be really fresh and exciting and I really wonder if the Jurassic Park 4 producers will do anything about this for example why have you ever noticed that all Jurassic Park dinosaurs are positioned as sort of this almost holy forces of nature they are either expected to kill evil people, in which they do, and we watch that with relish, or they are expected to be, you know, grand, majestic, and people always look up at all, you know, with whatever they are doing. And um, why aren't there any movies with a more real portrayal of animals? And I think you could have scenes in which you have dinosaurs do pretty weird things, pretty unexpected things, or you could have scenes in which the characters actually kill dinosaurs. Now, I'm not in the mood for any murder, but if you watch the movies, dinosaurs are always like this too holy to touch things. Whereas in real life, if you went to an island and something the size of a horse tried to attack you, you would have to shoot it. And more realism could make movies work. Heck, in fact, the whole concept could be taken to such strange new places like imagine imagine it could be something like uh, the lord of flies on an island where the dinosaurs would just pro uh, provide the backdrop as a necessary evil uh, driving the characters to show the true weirdness in them i really wonder how it would be like if someone like terence Malick, the director of tin red line or Lars von Trier, the director of many twisted fuck movies. What if they had a go at 
the, the dinosaur thing, you know? There, then you could get a truly original and thought-provoking movie, as original and thought-provoking as the first Jurassic Park was. And, you know, in saying this, I want to return to the whole feathers and the scales issue, and I will propose that if somebody tried to do a dinosaur movie in a more sort of human nature, more unexpected sort of way, a more maybe European streak of film direction, then that director would have a gold mine in the recent uh, series of feathery discoveries we have. Now, imagine, imagine like instead of uh, a running monster, you have something like, you know, one of those weird owls that change shape. Now, imagine you have a dinosaur that's clad in feathers, but you don't even know what it is. It's something like this. I will pull out the great dinosaur art movie, the dinosaur art volume. Now, imagine instead of a, a scaly monster, you have something like this, you know, it just stays there and, you know, maybe it puffs up its feathers and changes shape. It looks at you like this with weird sideways glances and, you know, because it's a bird-like thing, it does this real weird noise like and obviously I'm going off here, but you know, you could have far more creepy and weird possibilities. You could have really fascinating things. You could show these things and never tell their dinosaurs. They could be like this weird uh, psychological monster things. And you never need to reveal that. And you would have such a bigger impact on today's viewers. Uh, you could reverse the roles of the sacred uh, herbivore and the monstrous justice-dealing predator and you could have a scene in which one of the plant-eating uh, ceratopsians that's tricer triceratops for you I will come to that one second okay imagine you have a scene in which you know you have something like this you know one of these things or another peaceful herbivore and you know what many people overlook in today's world is that herbivores are really nasty animals and you know that thing which I showed you was like a size of a rhinoceros with a beak of a, a parrot and I would bet they were highly territorial. Imagine a scene in which you know one of these uh, very sacred herbivores is actually more dangerous you know something like this one here. Imagine a scene where something like this proves more dangerous than a predator because it's territorial or whatever it it bites a person in two just because he perceives themselves them as a risk or or whatever you know there could be many many weird things like that or imagine a scene from i'm gonna plug our book here imagine a scene from all yesterdays have you seen this book this is the book i wrote and helped illustrated with john conway and darren nash and here we took this sort of weird Lars von Trier look at dinosaurs, basically. And like this is Pterisnosaurus, you know, this is a huge plant-eating dinosaur with long claws. And we pictured it as, you know, as like a dark shambling shape. And you know, in if there was a really awesome dinosaur movie, it would have all these like weird, cryptic, unidentifiable animals that do not serve as metaphors or forces of nature and prove equally dangerous or curious or non-effectual towards a cast of characters whose main deal isn't getting off the island, but uh, whose psyches uh, make up the main bulk of the story. Now, there's a dinosaur movie I could watch. Without uh, going off into too many tangents, I'm telling you, Steven Spielberg, Lars von Trier, or uh, I don't know, whoever you are, maybe you'll watch this podcast too, and if you make this movie, I'm promising you, there's money in it, there's fun in it, and by golly, there's scientific accuracy in it. So, that was my four cents about the issue. Sorry if I wandered off too much. But basically, you know, come on, man, movies are becoming such tirades, they are becoming such, they are becoming so structured. Uh, you know what to expect when you see a movie, not a dinosaur movie, any movie, you know, you, you know which scenes you're gonna be treated to and somebody's gotta break the mold and 
I hope someday somebody breaks the mold with dinosaur films too. As always, have a nice day and peace out. We can always expect better movies in the future. Ciao!